This is it. The final Canadian Rally of the Decade. With most of the championship titles already decided, the long games are over. Come on, Sam. Whoa. The careful strategies wrapped up. We'd say at this point right now, it's uh, we're kind of speechless. This weekend, the Big White Winter Rally will be a fitting end to the season. An all-out, foot-to-the-floor, winner-takes-all race to the finish line. This man, he's, he's pretty fast. You know, it's like some of it's him, most of it's probably his co-driver, but... Uh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Will the conditions favor the veterans? Speed over crest, water, left 1025. Or will the rising stars shine brighter? This has been a, a big learning experience, especially in the R5. This is my first time on the snow with that. Some mixed conditions, definitely really challenging out there. The final round of the 2019 Canadian Rally Championship starts now. Welcome to Kelowna, BC, where the Big White Ski Resort plays host to the final round of the Canadian Rally Championship. It may look like a scene from a classic holiday film, but the soundtrack is about to be disrupted by turbocharged horsepower. 19 teams will dash through 177 kilometers of competition over eight special stages. An icy base lies hidden under fresh snow, so tire choice and traction will be critical on the mountain roads. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Confidence in motion. Teams arrive at the start of the first stage, kicking off the Saturday evening loop of four stages. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so four left plus six, straight to the crest. Brandon Semenuk and John Hall are first on the road. Semenuk is back in the McKenna Motorsport R5, but he has never faced conditions like these in this car. Right from the first kilometer, it's clear that the car's nimble setup isn't right for the conditions. But reflexes born out of years as a competitive mountain biker are keeping him out of the snowbanks and ahead of the competition. In rally, you can play it fast and loose, or you can play it smart. The former looks exciting, but the latter usually brings home results. Ken Stanek and Chris Kramer play it smart. Adopting a low-risk strategy and choosing their lines carefully, this team is already positioning themselves in podium contention. Playing the long game can be a challenge at any rally, but it's especially difficult this weekend. With the main championship titles already secured, the drivers are off the leash and can afford to take extra risks. But the temptation to push for the win could send some drivers home early. Hot on their heels, Dave Wallingford and Leanne Junilla will not make it easy for them. Since his back-breaking crash at Rally Mexico, Wallingford has been working hard to get back in the groove. He has proven his ability to learn from experience, and with each new stage under his belt, he returns closer to form. Coming off an overall win at Rally of the Tall Pines, Crazy Leo Erlichich and Tatiana Nikoleva are chasing the production all-wheel drive championship here this weekend, and they're in a battle with Joel Cates and Tiffany McDonald. The title will go to the class winner this weekend, but before the end of stage two, disaster strikes. Water, left 1025. The mistake costs Crazy Leo over 20 minutes. This opens the door for Cates and McDonald to shift strategies. They're no longer under pressure to chase Crazy Leo, which means they can focus on driving clean and keeping the car out of the snowbanks. Last 90, right five long. Despite their careful approach, the slippery conditions also catch them out. They will return to action eight and a half minutes ahead of Crazy Leo. Nate Sikora and Christy Donaldson are maintaining a pace that keeps them just outside the podium battle, but within range if attrition strikes the leaders. In two-wheel drive, Jason Bailey is usually a shoe-in for a solid battle for the class win, but his season has been plagued by bad luck. Unfortunately, the final round of the season sees more of the same. Time spent in the snowbank on stage one costs Jason and co-driver Jamie Willits dearly, dropping them well out of contention. 
Bailey can usually be found doing battle with his friend and rival, Wim Vanderpool. But despite Bailey's troubles, Wim and co-driver Brian Lord can't ease off just yet. Vanderpool missed out on repeating his two-wheel drive championship this year, but the two-wheel drive co-driver championship is still up for grabs for Brian Lord. To achieve that goal, they have to finish on the podium. Despite the team's proven consistency, they can't count on the points before they cross the finish line. Showing surprising speed, newcomers Cornelius Rempel and Betsy Nguyen are putting pressure on Vanderpool. Impressive, given that this is only Rempel's second rally as a driver. By the end of the night, Brandon Semenuk and John Hall have reined in the handling of the R5 to gain a significant lead. Semenuk ends the loop with a lead of three and a half minutes over Stanek. Wallingford is off the pace but has plenty of stage distance remaining to catch up. Rempel leads Vanderpool in two-wheel drive by six seconds. Day one of the big white winter rally is complete, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, yeah, end of day one, I wouldn't say they went smooth, but we're in the lead. We had some good times, regardless of a uh, uh, couple of spins. So hopefully I can leave the pirouettes out of the equation tomorrow and, and uh, get it home and try and have some fun stages tomorrow. Yeah, I made it, didn't hit any trees this year, so that's good, no damage on the car. Leo, unfortunately, was off on stage two, otherwise I was hoping to kind of see how close I could get to him and kind of speed this race. Uh, Brandon's super fast, and with the R5, he's he's quick, so he's untouchable. And then Dave's right behind us. Dave actually picked it up on the last stage. I think we only beat him by five seconds. He switched tires. He was on studs, stage one and two, and now he's on AO 34s. I think all the top cars are now on AO 34s. So uh, tomorrow should be good, and all that long stages are tomorrow. So today is almost like a warm-up for tomorrow. You know, it's hard to tell for about tire choice for tomorrow, too. There were one recce that was like, all right, well, this section I want the AOs, and this section I want the studs, but then I want to go back to the AOs, and, you know, I'd like to, you know, schedule in some tire changes in the middle of the stage, but I don't think that's going to work out in my favor. So uh, probably go with the AOs and hope for the best. We need 15 minutes to get back on the podium. We definitely got a couple of them in the back already, so I think we can do it. I think we're going to do it. Yes, I'm really looking forward to the stages tomorrow. Uh, during recce, they were a lot smoother than the one we just ran, so I'm hoping it'll be the same. Uh, they're nice and wide and pretty fast, so uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, I think we set a good base time, and tomorrow's game plan is to just keep going and just try and stay on the road and uh, bring it home. A new day dawns at the Big White Winter Rally when we come back. Subaru has been in Canada for a long time, building a reputation as champions in the toughest of conditions. 13-time Canadian Rally Manufacturers Champion and counting. Claim your own piece of history for $29,995. Subaru. Confidence in motion. A new day dawns crisp and clear at the Big White Winter Rally, and the rising sun greets a field of teams eager to hit the stages. Brandon Semenuk and John Hall lead the teams onto the stages. Two, one, go. With overnight setup changes, Semenuk hopes he's tamed the R5, but it looks like he still has work to do. Like, really? Sorry. Despite the spin, he still holds onto a lead of more than three minutes. Okay, how full that minus. Determined to gain time on second place this morning, Dave Wallingford and Leanne Junilla power into the morning loop. Both Wallingford and Semenuk opt for snow tires rather than studded ice tires. It looks like this tire choice works out better for Wallingford, but he also has a lot more seat time in the R5 than Semenuk. Wallingford has his sights set on Ken Stanek today. Stanek and co-driver Chris Kramer have a solid strategy in place. The question is, can they defend their place? They lead Wallingford by a minute and a half, 
a solid buffer, but they know he'll be on the attack in the improved conditions. It's the delicate balance of risk versus speed. Nate Sikora and Christy Donaldson also have that mindset figured out. They're on track for a solid finish, ready to pounce on any mistakes and refusing to get drawn into any drama. When the conditions get tricky, focusing on their own race will pay dividends. It doesn't take long before there's another shakeup in the two-wheel drive class. A hard-charging Vanderpoel and Lord are chasing after Rempel and Nguyen. With a miner off into a snowbank, Rempel gives up the lead to Vanderpoel and Lord. The newcomers manage to rock the car out of the snow and continue, but not before conceding valuable time to the veterans. But Vanderpoel is having problems of his own. An intermittent gearbox problem is preventing him from selecting third gear. Fortunately, the reduced traction on snow lessens the impact of losing a gear. Despite the problem, Vanderpoel and Lord increase their class lead. Alex Kuzmin and Steve Stevenson round out the top three in the two-wheel drive class in their production spec Fiesta. At maximum attack, Crazy Leo Orlicic and Tatiana Nikoleva are on fire, trying to make up the time they lost by stuffing it into the snowbank on day one. But these are the moments that Crazy Leo lives for. Latish left nine, very neg, Iceland. The pair has reeled in their production class rival, Joel Cates, for the class lead, and Crazy Leo has his sights set further up the leaderboard. But Joel Cates and Tiffany McDonald aren't conceding the production title yet. They know the smart move is to stay smooth and consistent and wait for Crazy Leo to live up to his nickname. What happened last night could easily happen again, especially if Leo is pushing to make up time on the overall leaders. More than a few championships have gone to competitors who play it smart. The gap between them is 46 seconds by the end of the loop. Semenuk extends his lead to over five minutes. Wallingford cuts his deficit to Stanek in half. Vanderpool now has a solid lead in the two-wheel drive class. The teams return for one last service before attacking the final loop of stages when we come back. Welcome back to the Big White Winter Rally. The teams are checking in at the last service of the season. Yeah, uh, a bit of a rough start. Two spins on the first stage, so... Yeah, we've been trying to find some setups just to help the car from just continuing to rotate through the bend, but um, it's just been challenging, so lost a bunch of time with the spinning, but we're still in the lead, so hopefully just, you know, keep it on the road, and if we spin again, just hopefully not get stuck. We've been lucky so far. Uh, it was okay. I tried to pull back a bit on stage, uh, the first stage this morning, but Wallingford took over 30 seconds on me, so I once I saw his time, I tried to push a little bit coming back up the hill and ended up spinning and he took 10 seconds on me, so I think I'll probably try to push a bit, but uh, if I can eliminate the the, uh, the spin, then things will be good. Yeah, yeah, I keep chipping away at Ken. Um, I, this, I'm much more comfortable today. I can, you know, see better. The um, conditions are more consistent. Uh, it was a little rough. Uh, it's very slippery out there. Um, just trying to keep the car under control. Uh, going in was better than coming out. Uh, we went into the ditch coming out, but we were able to rock ourselves out again and get going. Um, yeah, it's really slippery and it's just going to be a matter of trying to get a clean finish. Yeah, we, we caught him at the last stage because he had an off trip there somewhere. Uh, but well, that's catchy. Now it's just we have to bring it home so Brian get his uh, championship. Yeah, so the morning is going good. Um, we had a, a little bit of an off last night, so hurt the confidence a little bit. So, um, you know, just kind of really trying to ease back into things and playing it conservative. I know I got to get to the finish to have any sort of chance at taking this championship home, so. Well, first, what a stage. It was really, really fun, really good. We actually knew that we have a lot of time to make up eight and a half minutes in production class after yesterday's mistake. Kind of had a, had a bit of a push on. I'm loving it. That's like really, really fun. Had a great time, bo both runs. Um, 
we had uh, eight and a half minutes to make up and all of today in half of today we made up nine minutes already so pretty good uh, I think I made the wrong tire choice going out today uh, it obviously snowed a bunch overnight last night through the night stages of snowing all night so I imagine there being like quite a bit more fresh snow on the road I knew I knew they plowed it but it sounded like someone's gonna get left but it was just like ice most of the sections so we'll definitely go in studs this time I think that was key choice yeah, a little bit of a surprise. I think Leo went on on studs. The other three of us kind of went on on AO 34s. Uh, Brandon says definitely going on studs. I had a little bit of a debate, but I think I'll follow Brandon's lead and go uh, switch over to studs now. And um, But there's a combination of ice and snow. We had a ton of fresh snow yesterday, but there's way more ice showing than I think anyone anticipated. On the, the way out, I really thought hard about it, and I think I'm going to stick with the AOs. Um, they're just really consistent. I'm comfortable driving on them. I've used them more than the studs, so... I think I'm just gonna kind of keep running on the AOs and hope to kind of keep building on that consistency. There's enough ice out there that I should switch to suds, but I just trust the AOs more. They're more consistent um, in different conditions and uh, I'm just more comfortable with them. So I think I'll stick with them. I think I'm gonna back off a little bit. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna let Wim have uh, the two wheel drive win. Uh, he definitely deserves it. I'm just happy to be up there competing with the top drivers. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'll just we'll try and keep it clean and uh, just stay on the road. Yeah, two more Gem Falcon stages and then uh, that's that's it. But 50 so kilometers, so it's there's still lots of rally left and yeah, it should be exciting. Two long stages and it's uh, that's almost like, I don't know, a third of the rally or something. So uh, still anything can happen. One more pair of stages will decide the final podium of the season when we come back. Subaru has been in Canada for a long time, building a reputation as champions in the toughest of conditions. 13-time Canadian Rally Manufacturers Champion and counting. Claim your own piece of history for $29,995. Subaru. Confidence in motion. Welcome back to the Big White Winter Rally and the final two stages of the 2019 season. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada, confidence in motion. Despite a few drama-filled moments, Brandon Semenuk and John Hall have been in command of this rally since the first kilometer. Driving a high-strung rally car in challenging conditions can be a recipe for disaster but Semenuk combines a natural talent with the level-headedness that comes from being a professional athlete used to dealing with pressure. Slowing five left minus and breaking three right plus. And three left plus, three right plus opens. In two, six left over flat crest. Add in some top-level mentoring from the likes of Patrick Richard and John Hall, and the mountain bike star has the ingredients to go the distance in this sport. Although he couldn't challenge for another overall podium, Crazy Leo Orlicic will be happy to settle for the production all-wheel drive win and the championship title that goes with it. Leo and co-driver Tatiana Nikoleva have only had a limited amount of time together in the car, but they're already proving to be an effective team. Tit right seven minus right. minus. Tit right seven minus minus. Opens clip need 90 sleepy. Joel Cates and Tiffany McDonald finish the rally in second place in production all-wheel drive, tied for the class championship lead. Leo takes the title based on wins, but Cates takes the novice driver title and McDonald the class co-driver title. With a solid class lead in hand, Wim Vanderpoel and Brian Lord are closing in on Lord's two-wheel drive co-driver title. These are the moments where you can almost taste the champagne, but they're also the moments demanding the most caution. Truly stuck, Wim is convinced he has just cost Brian his championship. 
Vanderpol's mistake opens the door for Cornelius Rempel and Betsy Nguyen to take the win in two-wheel drive, an incredible performance at Rempel's first national rally. Alex Kuzmin and Steve Stevenson move up to take second place in the class. Vanderpol and Lord manage to make it to the finish line in third place, securing Lord's two-wheel drive co-driver's title after all. Nate Sikora and Christy Donaldson continue their smooth and steady drive all the way to the finish. Their low-risk strategy earns them fourth place overall, just outside the podium. Dave Wallingford and Leanne Junilla continue to reel in Stanek on almost every stage today, but it isn't quite enough and they take home third place. With the combination of pace, strategy and consistency, it's clear that Wallingford is well on his way to recovery. The experience gained makes them a threat for the podium at every rally. Ken Stanek and Chris Kramer earn their best ever finish by holding fast to their smart strategy through the whole event. They managed their early lead, just going fast enough to stay ahead. They stayed cool under pressure and didn't make any mistakes. The perfect balance of speed and risk was found to take home second place. Off camber, repeat left five, Titans four, off camber. 65. Caution, right six over 100, tightens to long, four off camber slippy. Be caution, right six over 100, tightens four off camber slippy. In the end, Brandon Semenuk and John Hall finish the big white winter rally the way they started it, in control. They win all but one stage through the whole event, closing out the 2019 Canadian Rally Championship season by stepping on top of the podium one more time. 40. Over the finish, three right, 50. All right, way to go. Semenuk and Hall win the rally with over eight minutes to Stanek and Kramer. Wallingford and Junilla round out the podium. Rempel and Nguyen take the two-wheel drive win, and Vanderpol and Lord's third place is enough to earn Lord the two-wheel drive co-driver title. Semenuk's win bumps him up to third in the championship, finishing just ahead of Crazy Leo. Yeah, I finished up the rally, super fun times. The last couple stages were a lot better for me. We made a little setup change with the car and just ended up handling so much better. So, I mean, it showed in the stage times and yeah, it was just felt like a really consistent drive. So yeah, another big white in the bag. Yeah, super happy. Dave was scaring me in the morning. He took like 34 seconds on the first stage this morning and then he had another 10 in uh, the second, another nine in the third, and then we, I think we nipped him by eight seconds in the end. And great way to end the season. Yeah, a little champagne and uh, celebration with the team. Yeah, uh, you know, I love rallying up here in Canada. This is uh, a great way to finish the season. Um, I, up here at Big White Ski Resort, this is a fantastic place to come rally. Yeah, so I think we were really feeling the pressure after finding out that we were sitting on top. So I think uh, the second time around, we decided to take it easier, but we actually made a faster time than the first time. So uh, yeah, I think just pulling back a little bit and keeping it clean is really what brought us home. The end of the Big White Winter Rally wraps up the 2019 Canadian Rally Championship. It's been an exciting season, and we hope you'll join us for more of the same in 2020.